Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're going to work on another one of Alejandro's reels. This one's a beauty. This one is a pen squitter. It's on a narrow frame, so it's called the Squitter Junior. Uh, it's uh, typically the version 146, I believe. But this one has got the 140 side plate on it. The 140 is your traditional wide frame um, squitter. So this one was built from a kit, or it was just simply uh, made... Uh, uh, from pieces and parts that belong to other reels. For example, the reel seat, I believe, is from the uh, Pen 40, uh, 49 or the 349. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the bars come from. It might be the 99 uh, uh, Silver Beach. Not sure. But at any rate, it's in beautiful condition. This reel is very nice, right? It, it'll spin all day. We just uh, just did a video on uh, Alejandro's uh, uh, vet reel. And you'd be hard pressed to match this with that from a spin and an ease of use. What this one does not have is high speed. This one has the traditional setup that's typical of a um, an earlier pen model. I believe that the ratio is only about three to one, maybe 2.8 to run. It is not a big ratioed reel, but uh, if you're jigging, uh, you, you might want to use the Yvette. If you're bottom fishing, or drift fishing, then you're fine with the uh, the slower retrieve rates. But short of that, very nice reel overall. So let's take you through it. If you have a pen squitter, regardless of whether it's the, the short frame uh, junior or if it's the uh, the, the wider frame, this, uh, this video will apply to you and uh, we'll show you how to do it. Now a couple of features and functions before we get started. There's a, a switch on here that many of you may not be familiar with. This is a uh, it's called, I call it a fighting switch, but it's an anti-reverse dog override switch. It's not unique to the, uh, uh, the, the, the pen reels, but it is fairly uncommon in the smaller frames. Now, you may find that you have a pen 10. There's a pen 10, just happened to be at hand. That also has the revised switch, but interestingly enough, you may have a pen 10 that does not have this override switch, and that was the first year that they actually made the, the Pen 10. After that, they went to the override. So what does that override do? Well, right now we've got an anti-reverse dog. Let's put it in here. It's holding you. If you flip this switch, you backpedal the reel. Now, why do you do that? Well, you do that to save drags. If uh, you're fighting a fish and that fish is really tearing away at you from the drag, you don't need to mess around with where your drag settings are, and you don't need to worry about burning them up. You simply backpedal the reel and you fight it manually using your hand as the drag as opposed to the drag system and that will uh, make it last a, a much longer time. All right, the squitter also has the single take apart screw. You know that from the jig masters. The jig master screw happens to be on this side. Not a problem, it's a matter of design. Single screw, we'll take it apart now. You unwrap the screw, you pull the screw out and then while you have the screw out, you simply make a very small and short turn to open up the reel, and that's in a counterclockwise direction. Here's our spool, and you can see on the back here, this reel is very clean, and it's spinning like uh, uh, all get out. So all you need to do is put some oil in that bearing. You don't need to do anything more than that. The oil that I'm gonna use is an aftermarket uh, oil. It's a uh, performance reel treatment called Reel-X and it's available uh, on the internet if you're interested in using that, uh, that reel. With that, just check to make sure it's clean in the back, which it is. We're just gonna go ahead and reinsert that. You could put a dab of grease on the back end of that spool if you wanted to, but uh, you don't need to. All right, let's get over to the drive side of the squitter then. We're gonna start by removing the handle. To do that, there's a set screw here that holds the handle nut. And then you need a handle wrench. Now, Penn provides a handle wrench. It's a very thin wrench. I'll just grab it out of my box here to show you. Anybody who's got a pen wrench, it's typical of seeing this. It's kind of thin. It works. If you're only doing this once or twice, go ahead and use that wrench. If you work on pens a lot, well, there's an aftermarket uh, wrench. There's actually a series of aftermarket wrenches. This is one of them. This wrench is by Alan Tanny, uh, and it, you can tell it's thicker and it's longer, so you have more uh, leverage. And then we have a wrench here 
which is not quite as thick. It's thicker than this one for sure, but it has multiple uh, pieces. Uh, some of them, like these, are for pens. These are for Shimano's and a couple of others that, uh, that work. And again, the whole idea here is leverage, and that's just stamped out of some metal. So that's kind of in between, right? Uh, you got uh, mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear, I guess. But regardless, use a fishing reel wrench. In a pinch, I hate to say it, but in a pinch, you can use something like a channel lock pliers if you don't have the wrench, but I would only recommend that if you're uh, really got a breakage and, and you're in really up a creek. If you do that, by all means, pad the, the nut before you go to grab it so that you don't scar anything. It's just a scrubby pad from a kitchen piece and you can use that to remove that nut, but we're not gonna do that with Alejandro's reel. We don't need to, we have this wrench and uh, we're gonna go ahead and use that. All right, this comes off. You'll notice I am wearing a protective glove on my hand to keep uh, the greases and the like out of there. And my parts are going into a parts tray, simply the bottom of a um, fast food container. All right. I like to take the handle off by backing off the star adjuster. To me, it's just an easier thing to do. And you don't risk kind of scarring anything as you do that. Just gonna grab some steel wool here just to get the dried grease off the back of that axle shaft and a clean paper towel just to kind of remove that grease. This is, as I mentioned, this reel is in nice condition. I did notice we had a little dried grease on the handle around that handle screw, so when we get a chance, might as well clean it up before we reinstall. Same thing here, we got a little bit of grease on that. Let's take that off. We'll do the same thing before I put it into my bin. Just 4-0 steel wool, nothing more aggressive than that. 4-0 steel wool is basically for polishing as opposed to uh, uh, smoothing. And uh, go with that. If you're missing the star adjuster for some reason, understand that there are two types of star adjusters. One of these has that indentation and the other one is a flat surface. The indentation shows up every now and then on some of the Long Beach reels and the like. Uh, and um, you need it here because you'll notice that the collar on the gear sits below the shield on the, uh, the side plate. So if you're trying to put a flat, flat faced one in, here's a, an example of a flat faced one, both sides are flat. If you're trying to put that on here, it will not work. So if you're rebuilding a reel and you don't have that, make sure that you go get one with the indentation. The whole idea with that indentation is keep water out. It's, this is not a watertight reel, but this reel does uh, have that little feature in it that will help to keep some of the water out. So again, just like the, uh, the other reel I worked on with him, just a lot of dry grease. So this is a basic service here. When I take the bridge off, I always want to make sure that I am in the up position on the free spool. That's your down position. That's your up position. I notice it's even tight as I'm going to do that. In this case, the uh, spring for the anti-reverse dog is actually inside the dog. So there's limited chance that that spring is gonna fly when you remove the bridge, unlike some of the others. So as a general practice with pen reels, I do like to cup my hand. Uh, cupping my hand will catch a spring that wants to, to shoot. And when I get the four screws loose, you'll notice that the bridge starts to creep forward. And then you can simply just push it through, keeping your hand uh, in that position just in case the spring wants to fly. So we're going to take that out and here's what I was referring to with your dog. Maybe hard to see on the video but that spring is lodged in a hole that's drilled in that anti-reverse dog. And uh, they do that because of the way that this overrides uh, and lets you back off the anti-reverse. That goes into my parts tray. We're going to examine the uh, pinion gear here, make sure that all of the teeth are uniform, that they're not bent or anything. If you have a reel, it feels like it's grinding. Chances are that the teeth are out of alignment either on the pinion gear or on the main gear, and uh, you'll need to replace those. Those of you that have been watching my channel know that I've taken on a project of 80 jig masters for a commercial fishing boat, and uh, the biggest problem that I'm finding with those is that we have worn gears. 
Okay, that comes out, and now this gear setup is the same as the uh, the Penn Long Beach 60 in terms of size of the, the washers. So if you need to replace the drag washers, uh, those are the 60 size drag washers. And now we want to remove the bridge. You just saw me pull off the main gear assembly, which has the drag washers in it. And we'll service that in a moment. Right now we want to service the, the bridge. To do that, there's a little pin holding this on. And you're going to look into gunsmith punches. Right now I don't have that. I have a pointed awl that I use. But in this case you need to push that pin out. And I think that in the gunsmith sizes they, uh, they start very small and would enable you to do that. Once you push, push that through you can remove that pin. And then you can remove the gear sleeve so we can get underneath here and make sure that that's clean. Now I'm leaving those parts right on my, my desk because they're not going far. I just want to use that steel wool again to polish. If this was um, some of the reels I've had, this channel where that pin rides gets jammed with grease. So just pay attention and make sure that's nice and clear. Once it is, go ahead and grab a brush and put some more grease on there so that it, uh, it stays lubricated. We can go ahead and, oops, before we get that, that was, oops, we have a pretty dirty bridge plate here. So again, you can do a couple of things. One of the things I like to do is use a penetrating oil as a general solvent. And I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, steel wall to get the old grease off that bridge. And this bridge is the bridge is stamped 200. It shares the bridge with the Surfmaster. So sometimes you hear the Surfmaster referred to as a uh, as a Squitter Junior, uh, as opposed to the short frame being referred to as a Squitter Junior. But uh, in either way, uh, they do share parts. The difference with the Surfmaster and the Squitter is the ball bearings. There's a different setup on the side plates for the ball bearings for the Pen Squitter, the uh, the Pen Surfmaster which comes in various sizes. It comes in a 100, a 150, and a 200, as well as a 250. But the 100, the 150, and the 200 share the same bridge. The 250 actually is the predecessor for the Penn Jigmaster, and the, uh, the 250 is on a larger frame with uh, different components. The, the thing that the 250 has uh, that's different from the Jigmaster is low speed. So the Jigmaster uses a higher speed gear, the, the 250 still uses a smaller gear set. All right, we got a lot of, of dirt and dried grease, and that's why this performance is kind of as tough as it is. You can just see it's caked on there. So I'm going to go back to my steel wall, see if I can't get that off. If I need to, I will certainly use the, the um, penetrating oil to loosen that up. Right now it seems to be doing okay with that. Same thing here, it's all, you can see it was having some trouble going down and you can just see we're just kind of loaded there with this, uh, this old dried grease, which will get in the way. So folks ask, you know, how frequently should I service my reel? And my, my position is the same as most major reel manufacturers, which says annually, when your season's done, or when you're ready to get ready for a season, I like it when it's done because generally you have some time on your hands. Uh, but when your season's done, go ahead and take the reels off uh, your, your rods and that. At a minimum, go clean them up, freshen them up. If you need drag washers, that's the good time to replace them. Inspect for damage, go ahead and order the replacement parts, and then take your time in the off season to uh, make a go of it in terms of uh, repairing them, tuning them up, getting them lubed, and then put them into storage. And your storage should be in a dry place. Uh, a lot of people hang their equipment in garages and that, sheds. Just be aware that that will um, help the, uh, deteriorate the greases and the like because of the, um, the humidity and the like. So it should be a dry place and it should be relatively temperature controlled. I uh, do service for some fishing boats, and some of the boats leave their equipment right in the boxes. 
the uh, rod boxes over the winter and I can rest assured that when I see the captain again in the spring that uh, I've got some work to do because a lot of them will seize up from uh, the dry greases. All right, I've cleaned it all out. I've put some oil in this side bearing. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to grab the grease brush, get grease onto the yoke. Already examined the pinion bearing, or pinion gear, so we'll go ahead and put that back in. I had bearing on my mind from the oil there. And we can grab the two. Uh, okay, so I'm also noticing here just a little ridge on this um, uh, eccentric spring. That may get in the way, so what I like to do there is file that down. So I got micro files here. I'm just going to take a moment see if we can't ease that out. That usually happens with replacement springs. Sometimes those springs are just a little bit proud. And if you can take a moment to kind of just work it through. Be careful not to go scraping the side plate when you're doing this if you choose to do this. And it doesn't take much. We're almost there. just feel it and that thing believe it or not catches the jack and every now and then you'll see scarring on the back of a jack because of that there you go much better now we're now we're flush and it didn't take much effort but sometimes you'll see a rut cut in the back here and that's because that spring here has uh, poked through and, and kind of inhib inhibited the um, release of that free spool all right springs go in Yoke and gear go on. Put a little bit of grease back onto that now. Slip the jack over it, and that part is done. Now I'm going to come over and finish this assembly. Let's find out what we have in here from a, a drag standpoint. Okay, we have the original leather washers in here. And there's nothing wrong with them as long as they stay flexible. And these are plenty flexible. So I'm just going to re-grease them. These are porous and you want to keep them flexible by putting some grease on. I'm going to use Cal's Universal Drag Grease and I'm going to use my gloved hand to work that in to the washer. And then if there's any excess just wipe that off. I'm getting pretty good to the point where there isn't excess. But uh, if you wanted to do a drag upgrade, you can certainly get the, the Pen HT100 drags. They're still available for this reel. Again, they share the gearing and the, the pieces with the, um, the, the Long Beach series and others. So uh, go ahead and do that. Now we have three metal washers. We have two keyed washers and an eared washer in the middle. The keyed ones have these flat um, sides and they hold the they hold to the gear sleeve here. The eared washer has a rounded middle and that holds to the, the main gear. So when you press this together you've got the main gear holding to the gear sleeve by way of the um, the washers. Alright I was just looking for the the hole in the gear sleeve on both sides to accept that uh, piece. And then the last one with the dry grease. Now, if you don't have dry grease, don't worry yourself to death. You can use the, uh, the real grease you've been using, in this case, pen precision real grease, and vice versa. If you, uh, if you don't have the real grease and you do have the, uh, uh, the dry grease, go ahead and use that. It's not going to impair products performance. It's just that they have a little bit of a different chemical property to them and uh, one, uh, I, I use them both. Okay, I just cleaned up the top of that. There should be a cap washer now. There it is, it's hiding under my bridge. And then there is our gear sleeve and you want to use a uh, Cotton swab to make sure the inside of that gear sleeve is clean. You can put that on. And then this one's a little bit different in terms of installing the, 
the dog and the bridge because of that, the way that that spring is. So push down, get that seated up top, take your bridge, put it through the hole, and then rotate it so it's kind of holding the rest of the assembly there. Don't worry if you, your ferrule falls out at that point. Put the sleeve in, or put the screw into the one that holds the anti-reverse dog. Take your anti-reverse dog with the spring inside it, put it over the hole, and then you'll see where that spring lines up with a little uh, stud in the plate, right there. And then, because that sleeve fell out, I'm behind the, uh, the gear sleeve now, so just lift it up so that you can get it set on the right side, like that. Then continue your rotation until you're over that screw, and then tighten down one or two turns just to hold it in place while you go to put the other screws in. There's two different types of screws here. There is a screw that has full threads, those belong on the bottom. There's a screw that has partial threads, those belong on the top. Bottom and top being determined by the way that the reel sits. And the reason for those partial threads is that's where your, screw, your springs are that you saw on the yoke. And that smooth surface makes the springs operate better. Okay, now once you've got them all in, you can go ahead and tighten them down. This reel's in very nice condition. Alejandro's got a prize here. Okay, and uh, because I have all the pieces and parts off, I'm just going to use the pen, rod, and reel cleaner on this. Just a quick shot here. And I use that kitchen scrubber that you saw me demonstrating how to use a pliers with before. I'm just going to use that to kind of wipe it away. This uh, this is a two-step kind of a, a multi-purpose product. It's a cleaner and a polish. So it will help you uh, in both regards. Okay, just clean that up. It's great for fish scale removal and the like if you happen to have a hard day, if you will, on sea. Let's grab that uh, furl sleeve, put that over there. Remember we have the one here that has the raised uh, cup. Let's get that back on. Got our nice clean handle here. Let's go put that back on. Now if we didn't grease that shaft, you would take some oil and you would put it in there. However, we did grease that as part of our service, so we're going to leave that alone. Grab the handle screw. And I like to do that by hand, tightening it as much as I can. That way I'm sure that I have the... Uh, the screw set properly. Also, before you make your final tightening, make sure that your drag washers are pressed down so that you don't pin that adjuster to the handle. Once you do that, align the cup on your screw with that uh, screw hole. Then we can put that little retaining screw back in and all that's left is to put this back on the reel and give it a test. All right. One last piece of lubrication. Let's just get a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft on this side. Let's go ahead and grab the reel. We're going to tighten this up on a single screw to hold the side plate in. Boy, that's one nice reel. Alejandro, you have a beauty here. Okay. That is your service of the pen squitter. This one being a, um, a hybrid, it's using the 140 side plate on the 146 chassis. And uh, that's okay. <laughs> but that's just one beautiful reel. I'll take this one over the event that I just serviced any day. But uh, that may be just old school against new school talking. And again, it depends on what your, your usage is. If you have a jigging application or or uh, the like, then you're probably going to want the high speed reel. This one's got the lower speed, but this one is a classic. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Again, thank you to all of our first responders and essential personnel. 
uh, for keeping us safe during the pandemic. For the rest of us, let's do our part. Let's make sure we wear our masks, maintain our social distance, and watch our contacts during the, uh, the upcoming holiday season. It's, uh, it's going to get tough. It is tough. I guess there's a new strain of the virus going on out there in Britain right now. And uh, just be aware of it. Please stay safe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.